Somewhere around 80% of divorces are filed by women. Why is that? Is it because we're not capable of love? Is it because our loyalty only lies with status and money? Or is it because our brains have been totally poisoned by modern feminism and this narrative around the patriarchy that really villainizes men? The actual reason that so many divorces are filed by women, initiated by women, is something much deeper and something much more ubiquitous across our culture. The real reason for all of these divorces is that almost everyone who grows up in our modern society goes through some sort of relational trauma that handicaps their ability to form or sustain healthy relationships. And because women are usually conditioned to be more emotionally indulgent and men are conditioned to be more emotionally suppressive, women usually notice how messed up the relationships are before men do. But the marriage wasn't just bad for her. If it was bad for her, if it took her to the point of wanting a divorce, then it was bad for you too. If you are a man going through an unwanted separation or divorce, please stop and ask yourself these three questions. Question number one, when was the last time that you felt truly heard and seen in your marriage? Question number two, how specifically did your wife show you that you were deeply loved? And question number three, how did you show her that she was deeply loved? If you're honest with your answers to those questions, you'll probably notice that your marriage wasn't meeting your needs any more than it was meeting hers. And really, how could it have? As babies and as small children, human beings learn how to function in relationships and in life, right? We learn about what is safe, what isn't, how to protect ourselves while still getting our needs met. And so think about it. What did your parents teach you about intimate love? What did her parents teach her about intimate love? And if you're really willing to face some hard truths, ask yourself, what have the two of you been teaching your own children about intimate love? Have they been seeing you hug and kiss? Have they been seeing acts of kindness and gentleness and grace towards one another? Have they been seeing respect and patience and care? When I ask my clients questions like this, I get a variety of answers, but often there are things like this, like, my mom was really cold and distant. I know she loved me, but she didn't express it very much. Right? Or I never really saw my parents kiss or hug each other, or there was a lot of yelling and fighting all of the time. Sometimes I'll hear about the role that your parent was in. Right? Well, my father was a really good provider, or my mom took really good care of us, but I was lonely a lot as a child. Right? So you're learning about the role you're supposed to play, but you're not learning anything at all about intimate love, or at least not anything that's going to help you create a healthy and strong marriage. Recently, a very brave man in my Better Beyond Divorce community told me, you know, Rachel, I worked really hard and I tried to make a good life for us, but I don't think I ever really knew how to love her. And how could he have? Right, not only was he never taught that, and his parents never showed him how to give and receive love in a healthy way, his childhood and his early romantic experiences also taught him that he needed to protect himself from women, or that he had to be careful, a little bit guarded, a little bit tough, and he learned to keep the softer, gentler, even the fearful or tender sides of himself hidden from his relationships with women. And movies and TV does not help us with this. The other night I watched this old romantic comedy from the 90s and I, I was shocked. There are so many scenes where there's a woman slapping her boyfriend because he said something stupid or because he cried at something to show. Like these scenes are supposed to be funny, but what are they really teaching us about what romantic love looks like? If you honestly reflect back on your marriage, was it good for you? Was it meeting your needs physically, emotionally? Without knowing anything at all about your situation, I can tell you one thing. If she wasn't happy, you weren't happy. The difference is that men are taught from a very young age that their role is to be tough and strong and committed. And they're taught to suppress what they feel, especially things like fear or sadness and hurt. And they learn to ignore pain, to suppress pain, whether it's physical or emotional, and to just suck it up and be tough and man up and push through and get through things and get on with it. And so women are a lot more likely to notice how bad things are in the relationship before men do. And that really sucks for men because when they hear about how bad it was, you're hearing about it from her, right? So you're only hearing her side of the story. You're hearing how bad it was for her. But the truth is, if it was bad for her, it was bad for you. 
And now I know some of you are listening to this and you're like, well, what do I do then, Rachel? Right? Like we're all screwed. It's not just women. Like we all have this relational trauma and it handicaps our ability to have healthy relationships. So what is the point of even trying? Please don't give up hope just yet. You can break this multi-generational cycle of crappy relationships and actually feel seen and heard and deeply loved in your next relationship. We can change this cycle. You have the power to change this cycle. So come with me into this next video because that is what we are going to talk about, how to break free from this shitty multi-generational cycle of trauma that you have been fed so that your next relationship feels very different and actually does meet your needs and your partner's needs. Okay, guys, I'll see you in the next video.